So, how about them Concords? For those who don't know, on August the 20th, Sony Interactive Entertainment published their very own online shooter game to rival Overwatch, named Concord. Developed by Firewalk Studios, the game was eight years in the making with a budget of roughly $200 million. What? What the fuck? And in just two weeks, the game was pulled from the market because no one played it. Truly the Solomon Grundy of the gaming world. All right, look. It's been about a week and a half as I'm recording this, and there's already a plethora of videos covering the downfall of this game and the reasons behind it. And there are multiple reasons, to be fair. One of them being that it's a $40 game in a genre where its competition majority is free to play. And if you're looking for an in-depth video essay on where Concord failed and how it failed, please look somewhere else. I genuinely do not care. Everything I know about Concord, which is not much, has been against my will. And the only time I learn about new details is because I'm editing this video. I don't even like shooter games, except Metal Slug, but especially first person shooter games, which I'm sure is gonna raise some eyebrows like, if you don't like the game tomorrow, you fuck about the. To which I will answer, I've never played Overwatch or League of Legends, but I still love the character designs of Tracer, Mercy, Jinx, and Echo. They look quite nice. The same cannot be said for the characters of Concord. Look at this one with a medieval lantern for a helmet. This one looks like Lindor chocolate. Ha <laughs> ha! Who makes me want to dance? I'm gonna kill myself! Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! I have eyes. I can see ugly. And I believe, and lots of other people believe, that that is what actually led to Concord's ultimate downfall. The god-awful character designs. Look at this. This is the entire character roster, and I don't even know what I'm looking at. None of these characters tell a story or even give me a modicum of a hint as to what they do. Like this guy, Daw, uh, who I thought was a woman, is supposed to be a healer? A healer? H How, Sway? In fact, it is so bad that there are artists coming out of the woodwork redesigning some of these things. And I draw things, and I kind of want to redraw them too. So here we are. <laughs> so I know this is going to be a little hard to believe because I'm making a whole video about it, but I'm not trying to dog on any of the artists who are working on this game. And while I have very little sympathy for them as creators trying to sell their wares in a market they very obviously hate, calling your own customers talentless freaks is a very bold marketing strategy, to say the least. As from one artist to another though, going after someone's whole portfolio and their art direction or art style is doing too much for me. Those guys are already crying in their cars, punching the air as it is. I'm just trying to stay on topic here. However, as a massively multi-billion dollar company, wow. Sony should know better. So I haven't watched any of the redesign videos because I didn't want to be influenced by anything. So this is all going to be my imagination and my decision making. Also, also, I am not a professional concept artist, nor have I ever worked in the industry. So I genuinely do think this would be a very good concept design exercise. I focused only on three characters just to keep it simple, and they're all going to be very rough first passes. Stuff like this would obviously go through multiple revisions before the design is finalized, but I really just want to try and convey the concept here. My main goals were the following. Appealing visual design, clear character purpose, and reworking the colors because yikes. I'll also have check boxes towards the end of the video to see if I accomplish all those goals. So for right now, let's start with Baz. You know who this motherfucker look like, Loki? Look! I mentioned this before, but when you're designing a character, you want to make clear the purpose of said character at face value, especially when we're talking about video games. Let me take Jinx for example. She's a petite young woman with comically large guns and a smile that rivals the Joker's. What I can glean immediately from this character without knowing anything about her backstory is that she's a little bit crazy and along with her weapons, besides just being good shape hierarchy and thus making interesting silhouettes, this Jinx character enjoys chaos on the battlefield. Guns that big are going to make a lot of noise. The name is also extra points. I don't think it's necessary, but I can tell the creators really wanted to drive the theme home, and I respect it. 
Now let's cut to Baz who... Question. Without looking it up, just looking on what's on the screen right now, what is your first inclination as to what this character can do? I'm very curious. Thought about it? Okay, write it in the comments. For me, the first word that came to my mind was eccentric. She dresses loud, she dresses bigly. Her glasses are the latest fashion. Those shoes were definitely the closest to the front door, felt. And these knife things, I'm assuming she's going to be throwing them, I guess. Where does she store them? Hmm? Where's her little pouch? Also, she's gripping the hell out of those things. Are they not sharp? They're not going to cut her gloves? This is what I'm talking about. What exactly am I supposed to take away from this design? What about it is supposed to make me look deeper into what the character does, what the backstory is? And to be real with you, I still don't know this character's moveset as of recording, as of probably editing. Maybe I'll just pop something up on the screen in post-production. I don't know. The only decent thing I can compliment this design on is the color palette follows one of my favorite color schemes. Just by taking the colors directly from the official design, we can see that her color scheme favors heavily on the left side of the color wheel, since she's mostly made up of reds, pinks, and purples. When chosen colors are this closely packed together on the wheel, it's called an analogous color scheme. The leftover colors, I would assume, are just accents. Neutral colors or a striking hue are usually used to contrast or highlight the main scheme. So while I didn't change much of the colors, I did add more pinks and I got rid of the grays because I think black and white are already good enough to pop out all the other colors. I also forewent the yellow on her shades and I added gold hoop earrings instead because they look nice. The real difference is in the theme. Like I said before, I thought Baz looked very eccentric, so I just rolled with that. And plus with her color scheme, she looked more like a rock star to me. Also Baz sounds like bass and jazz and I just went with bass. A rock star oozes charisma, but I also didn't want her to look borderline crazy like she does now, so I reduced the hell out of those obnoxious shoulder pads, and I gave her a white bustier. Halter top would have been nice too. But you won't see much of it because I decided to give her a funky futuristic base that also doubles as an axe. Those throwing knives are absolutely nowhere to be seen, but I guess for a projectile attack, she can throw... what are those things called? Those guitar picks. Yeah, she can throw guitar picks. Her pants are now as black as her hair, and I gave that head a bandana to cover up whatever that is. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? And to top it off, I replaced those beat up sneakers with some thigh high boots. Overall, she looks a lot less crazy now, <laughs> but still larger than life. I can easily see someone getting starstruck from her. And to be clear, I think this still needs a lot more passes before I would consider this a final design. But it looks nice. She looks good. All right, now on to bra. <clears throat> I mean, now on to Star Child. <laughs> this dude's head looks like a mushroom, and his very human eyes scare me. Star Child looks like the creators want to go three separate directions, and they couldn't land on any of them. And his gun looks like an afterthought. Well, now that I think about it, everyone's weapons look like an afterthought. It's really weird. Anyway, since the blaster is yellow and his body is mostly blue with a touch of red, I decided to push that and make it a triadic color scheme, which is essentially three colors that are equally distant from one another on the color wheel. Like an equilateral triangle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, as I was doing this demonstration right here, I realized that... I'm using an RGB color wheel, which is a computer wheel, as opposed to the RYB color wheel, which is the painter's wheel. The painter's wheel is what you used back in school and how you learned all your colors. There are some glaring differences between RGB and RYB, but I don't want to get into that. Basically, on the RYB color wheel, you would actually see an equilateral triangle. That's why you don't see it on the RGB. Just in case some people are very confused at what they're seeing right now. Okay, sorry. I had some fun with this one. Star Child's design is so boring that it can be anything at this point. Besides looking like Brock, his red face and his chin horns remind me of Hellboy, so I just combined the two. I really pushed the demon features from Hellboy by giving him an extra set of horns on his head, a tail, and some demon looking feet. 
I think he would be wearing boots on the battlefield, but I just wanted to show the difference. Brox's influence really shines in the yellows, in the shoulder guard, and in the very giant hammer. <laughs> he doesn't really look like a blacksmith here, but maybe it's the start of a handyman. I also put a little scar on his head that's an upside down star as an homage to his namesake, and it's a little tongue in cheek way to show that he's a demon. Maybe there was another horn there. Maybe Starchild's kind has three horns on their heads, and something happened to him to make him lose that horn. Who knows? I'm, I made that up completely on, on the fly. But the point here is, besides making your character just look good, you also want your character to tell a story, and that story is going to make the audience want to learn more about it. I just made that up and I want to know what happened to that third horn. <laughs> Okay, I don't have a good segue for this, so here's Dawn next to Blue Hoodie Queso. I'm about to crap in my pants just to feel the warmth. I have very little words. I've been saying this the entire video, but I have no idea what I'm looking at. Absolutely no indication that this man is supposed to be a healer, number one. And number two, what is this color scheme? I'm assuming they're trying to make a split complementary scheme, which is two colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel with an extra additional color, which is in this case green, but then there's another color that's a yellowish green and it reads too much like yellow on top of the murky green and now I'm confused. And number three, the color hierarchy, every color is fighting with each other. My God, this is the reason why I made this whole video. Sixty thirty ten. This is a very common rule in interior design that dictates color hierarchy. 60% of the room consists of the main or the dominant color, 30% is the secondary color, and 10% are the accent or the highlighted colors. In Baz's case, the main color is red, the secondary color is black, and the accents are the rest. Same with Starchild, 60% blue, 30% red, and 10% black and yellow. Daw's colors may not be equal in appearance, but they are equal in vibrancy. The green is fighting with the blue, and that orange is louder than that she games. It's with an A! I felt I had the most freedom with Daw, even more so with Starchild. So, like the others, I picked out two things from his appearance for a starting point. One, he looks Samoan, and two, the green jumpsuit and the orange gloves were giving fisherman vibes. I was originally going to have him in overalls with a harpoon gun, but I really didn't feel like designing a harpoon gun, so I just left it in his hand. Also, I really wanted him to look like an islander, and the overalls would have covered a lot of his skin, including any potential tattoo. I changed the big puffy jacket into a little blue vest, and I gave him a white and blue Hawaiian skirt wrap. I'm sure there's an official name for it, but let's be real, that's a skirt. The hardest part for me, besides the pose, was the sci-fi aspect. Never mind that I don't really draw sci-fi stuff, but... This doll is a big jolly dude, and him throwing a harpoon with his pure strength shows that he doesn't really need any futuristic weapon. How I tied it back though was to make him a cyborg. This guy doesn't really need the latest technology to do his job, but that means he's more vulnerable than most. And on one fateful day, Daw wrestled with the ocean and lost. Both his legs to be exact. Since he was going to need replacements to do what he loves, he figured he should have legs that make him much harder to catch. Thus, the robot frog legs. Look, I tried. They're orange cause something something bright colors equals poisonous, and from a visual point of view, it brings your eyes back up to see the orange band-aids covering his hands. And that tells you that he is still reckless even after the accident. With this redesign, the 60-30-10 rule holds up. 60% is blue, 30% is orange, and 10% is the rest of the colors, white and black. I also dumped all the greens onto the fish because I had nowhere else to put them. I don't like this design. I don't know if I'm being my worst critic or whatever, but I feel like there's no hope for this character. His design is the reason why I procrastinated this long for this video too. Let me know what you think, but I think this is a lost cause. Alright, now that the buckle the video is over, I can go over my design goals. As you can see, I added an extra checkbox because I think it's pretty important to the nature of these characters. Are these designs fit for a shooter game? No. No, they are not. There is not one gun to be found, and the only projectile here is Daw's harpoon, but it's... it's one harpoon. <laughs> 
If I were to give this to an art director, they would immediately reject it. However, if the goal was to make designs for, say, a melee game, I think I'd be onto something. I don't play any shooter games except Metal Slug. I much, much prefer fighting games and RPGs. Now back to the list. I'm being pretty biased here, shocker, but I think these characters are way more interesting to look at than the official design. Even Da, who still makes my eyes sore, looks like a character you'd have fun playing as or just learning more about his robot fish legs. Which leads me to my next goal. This Da is obviously a fisherman and this Baz is obviously in a band. I feel like I fell short on Star Child, but to be honest. The hammer is the start of something, maybe a maintenance guy or something like that, but he still feels incomplete. But as for the color choice, well, Doll no longer looks like a walking epileptic seizure, so I think I'd say mission accomplished. And I have nothing else to say, so I guess that's the end of this video. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Alright, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and if you did, go check out some of my other videos. I also have an online store where I sell some of my artwork, including my very own Not Yoshi design as stickers and an apparel collection based on the PS5 if it were people. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.